What's going on everybody and welcome back to Tech Cubed. and today we are going to be installing Windows Vista into a VirtualBox virtual machine. Now Windows Vista is definitely a older operating system. It came out in 2007 and I think it was January 30th, 2007. Uh, but it definitely still has a purpose and it can still be used for a lot of things and that's why we're going to be going over how to install it today in VirtualBox how to get everything in it set up because there may be reasons that people still want to use Windows Vista in 2021 um, if you're watching this in 2021 of course which is when I am recording and releasing this video um, but yeah so I originally tried to get this running not too long ago however I couldn't get it to run originally on the uh, tutorial I was using like on a different website so I had to go searching around like for the correct ISO because the original one like if you were searching up Windows Vista and get the ISO from there it didn't work for me um, because the kernel it had like a kernel panic um, however I eventually got it to work with a different ISO, and I will of course have a link to that in the description below. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to bring you uh, the tutorial that has everything you need to know in it um, without having to go searching around for everything like I get it did. Anyway, you're going to need a couple things to get this running of course. You're of course going to need VirtualBox, which I have right here. Um, next thing you're going to need is the Windows Vista ISO, which I have right here. Of course, there's going to be a link to this in the description below, but we are pretty much ready to get started. So first thing you're going to want to do is open up VirtualBox. You're going to want to click new. I am going to set my custom machine folder like I always do. However, you can keep it the way that it's set. Um, I will mention this really quick. So if you were to open this up, it, like you just download VirtualBox to open this up, it would look different the Korean virtual machine because I am using expert mode and not guided mode because you can see this little toggle down here. Now, expert and guided mode are pretty much the same thing, um, but guided mode sort of walks you through it a little bit more if you're a beginner, and um, expert mode is pretty much straightforward because it just tells you everything and lets you set it without like telling you like everything else like that. Um, it's hard to explain, but basically, um, guided mode just walks you through everything a lot more. Um, anyway, we're going to use expert mode today. Um, and of course, I'm going to call it Windows Vista. And we're going to use Windows Vista 64-bit, Microsoft Windows, of course. Now, I am going to use 4 gigs of memory. Now, you can use 2 or even more than 4. However, I think 4 gigs of memory is a good amount to have a Windows Vista. Um, it lets you multitask, at least to an extent. just gives you an all-around good amount of memory to have Windows Vista. Um, and, it, and 4 gigs is even more memory than some Windows Vista machines had. However, if you want to, you can go up to 8, and I could do that if I wanted to. However, I'm just going to stick with 4 since that is just an all-around good amount to have in Windows Vista. And of course, hard disk, we're going to create a virtual hard disk now. We're going to go in here. Now, for the size, that is really up to you. Now, it says 25 gigs right here. I am going to up it to 50. That gives us a decent amount to work with. Um, however, I am going to use, of course, the VDI and dynamically allocated. Um, yeah, so that should be good. Now click Create. Now we'll have Windows Vista down here. We are not ready to start it up yet. I am going to go to Settings. And I am going to come down here to Storage. And where it says Empty, I am going to click Choose a Disk File. And we are going to put in the Windows Vista ISO. And next thing we're going to do, now this is optional, however, I'm going to put two processors in here. Again, completely optional, however, I like to have two processors in a lot of these machines. Uh, pretty much everything after, I'd say the year 2000, um, I recommend having two processors on, even more if you're working with like newer uh, operating systems, you know, like Windows 10, or even some Linux versions, you might want to even have four processors. Um, however, two Windows Vista, that's an all around good amount to have. And we can just click OK. And we are ready to start it up. So I'm just going to click Start. And now uh, it will basically start up. Um, it may take a couple seconds to a couple minutes, depending on your machine, because it has to prepare everything. Um, but it just opened it up right here. And now where it selects, and now, what, now where it says select a startup disk, um, we already put our startup disk in there earlier, so we can just click out of it. However, if you didn't, um, like for example, some people don't go into settings and do it, so you can just do it from here. It's more straightforward, however, it's better to do in settings because you can configure other things as well that you may need to to get the operating system to work because some operating systems don't work out of the box. Um, but yeah, we can just click X and get ready to the little notification banners. 
and it will start up. Now, it will uh, say Windows is loading files and it will bring us to the setup right here. So it seems to already be uh, working the way it is supposed to. Now, um, it has like the typical uh, Windows Vista uh, installation uh, menu. Um, now this is a lot of your personal preference, uh, these next few steps. So of course I'm going to do English, English United States, and yeah, US keyboard. Um, however, you can do it differently if you want to, um, but I'm just going to go there now and then of course we click install. And then of course we're going to accept the license terms. And then of course we're going to go into custom. We can't do upgrade, we're going to do custom. I'll explain why. Uh, so if we go to custom, um, it says advanced, it's not really advanced, but custom lets us come in here and say we want to install it on this disk and that's basically where we want to because we are not going to do uh, upgrading it from like Windows XP or something which uh, was what the other method was designed to do. Um, but yeah, so it's going to basically install Windows Vista now. Now you can just sit back and wait for this to finish. In fact, um, I will be right back when it finishes. All right, we're back in Windows Vista, just finished installing, and now it needs a restart to continue. So we will let it restart because this is one of the machines or uh, operating systems that we can let restart uh, on its own. Some that uh, we need to turn off and configure a couple things before moving on. However, Windows Vista is one of the ones where we can just let it go by itself. And then when it restarts, we say that we don't want to boot from the ISO image. And then it will boot up into the uh, virtual hard disk operating system that has our OS on it. So basically now we just need to go through and finish a few setup processes like um, putting in our username and password that we are going to use with this machine. And then we are pretty much good to go. Now it is taking a couple seconds to start up as it always does when you are first setting up a operating system. Um, however, it shouldn't take that long. In fact, the installation for me didn't take that long. It actually took uh, quicker than I expected it to. Um, but yeah, so it, all of this really uh, depends on your p machine in particular. And if say if you're using this on a hard drive, it will be slower than using it on a solid state drive. Um, I, in fact, though, I am using this on a secondary hard drive I do have in my machine, so um, it is going to be a little bit slower than if I were to use my main SSD. However, I still get pretty good speeds out of it, but yeah, that's something to consider, that if you are using this on an SSD, that will be slightly faster than if you are using this on a hard drive, especially if you're like starting up your operating systems and things like that. It can definitely cut times down by a decent amount. But this will take a couple uh, seconds, well, seconds to a couple minutes to start up, to be honest. Um, and I will be right back when it finishes starting up. Okay, so we're back and Windows Vista just finished starting up. But I want to mention something real quick before we finish the final steps of setting up Windows Vista. That when it was starting up and we last left off, it, it went and actually completed the installation and then it restarted the virtual machine over again. So if it does that for you, don't be worried. It's just a normal procedure that it does and then it'll bring you to this page. So it may take um, some more time depending um, on your machine or your ISO or whatever. So don't be worried if it does that because it will go through um, or it may go through and just finish the installation then restart again. Um, anyway, so next we have to type a username. I'm going to go with a tech cubed, of course. And for my password, uh, we are not going to use a password because I don't really need a password. And uh, for any of these pictures, um, I don't really care what picture we use. Um, a lot of these are um, all right, I guess. Uh, we're going to go with, I guess, the chess pieces. Um, we're going to go next and uh, tech cubed PC. Uh, sure, uh, which uh, background do we want to use? We'll go with the classic Windows Vista background. And we're going to go with next. And then we're just going to stick with the recommended settings. Um, of course, it's something you can figure if you want to. In fact, I may configure it later. Um, however, recommended settings is going to be fine for most people. Um, and next, we're going to use uh, Pacific Time. And I'm going to click next. Um, of course, you may use a different time zone, but I use Pacific Time. Um, select your computer's current location, um, home. And I guess we can start now. Um, it's pretty quick, uh, finishing setup installation. Now, I will tell you this, that I like the setup of Windows Vista more than a lot of others for one main reason, that while you're on here, okay, so I guess it's just running through and doing a couple more things before it brings us to home screen. Um, but I will mention this, that I really like how Windows Vista 
um, does it make you use like a Microsoft account like the newer ones do? Um, of course, you didn't, like I don't think a lot of Microsoft accounts even existed back in 2007. Um, however, like on the new Windows, it's like so it connects to the internet and then it makes you use an account. So you have to like not connect to the internet or like not plug in your Ethernet cable and then like go through and say we're just not using internet. We don't have internet, you know, and then connect to the internet later because I don't want to use like a Microsoft account. I don't think anyone really does it, but it like makes you do that. Um, but anyway, so it's just gonna go through and do a couple more things before it brings us to the home screen And I will be right back when we are at the home screen All right, so we're back now and we are finally at the Windows Vista home screen now Everything is pretty much already set up um, We can even go in here and we can use internet things like that. It's pretty outdated But you can still do it if you want to um, but yeah Windows Vista is pretty much set up and you can use it for whatever you want to um, so that is pretty much going to be it for me today. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, drop some recommendations for other operating systems you may want to see a tutorial for in the comments um, if you want to. Um, but yeah, again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Tech Cubed, over and out.